Well, um, I am so excited to see everybody here today. I have been dreaming about this moment all month. Um, I've been working on things, so it's great to see you all here. Um, well. Thanks for organizing. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being here. Amazing. Um, so I just wanted to, um, real quick, just a couple of things to tell you guys. First of all, can you guys hear me okay? Can, can you guys, is there any issue there? You can hear me? Okay, great. And then I just wanted to draw everyone's attention to the chat. Um, so if you are new to Zoom um, or you know, you're just not familiar with the chat, there is a little chat box. So it should be right at the bottom of your screen. You'll see it says security participants chat. So if you click on the chat, um, I will be um, updating you guys with um, a couple of different links and things during the exhibition. And this is where I'm also going to invite you to um, post any questions. So we will try to get to all the questions, um, but just so that you know, there's a lot of people on the call and um, we don't want people interrupting each other since there's so many people. So I'm just asking that if you could put your um, question in the chat and we will get to that as it comes up. So I'm so excited to have you guys here. So welcome officially to the new Pre-Raphaelites exhibition with ERA Contemporary. So I hope you're doing very well today and enjoying the nice fall weather we've been having at least here in the East Coast, and I'm here in Philadelphia. And I know that we have people from all over the world here on this call, and I'm curious where you are calling in from right now. So if you feel like it, you can just share in the chat where you are in the world right now. Okay, we have um, New York City, Chicago, Brooklyn, France, Austin, Texas, Mobile, Alabama, California, the Adirondacks, uh, Texas, Philly, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Georgia. Oh my goodness. Shanghai. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Shanghai. So cool. Minneapolis, Philadelphia, New Jersey, Manassas, Virginia, uh, Michigan, Winco, PA, um, California, Switzerland, San Diego. Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. That's so amazing. Okay. Um, so cool. So, um, I have not gotten the chance to travel much lately as I'm sure most of you have not. So it's, it's like, I'm virtually traveling to all these places in my mind as I say them. So cool. So, okay. So my name is Jessica Libor and I'm the curator for this exhibition as well as an artist myself. I have a few pieces in the show, as you'll see. And I want to share a little bit with you about who the pre raphaelites were. But before I do, I just wanted to kind of share the rundown of how things will go in the call and then what you need to know about the presentation um, of everything. So this is an entirely virtual exhibition. So you can view the work in the virtual galleries, which I will be showing you. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen with you, so it'll be super easy. Um, so you can view the work in the virtual galleries as well as purchase the artwork on the Era Contemporary website. And I will be sharing my screen with you to show you the virtual viewing rooms during the exhibition. But on your own time, you can explore the virtual galleries as much as you wish. They are on the Era Contemporary website live at eracontemporary.com. So when you do, you, um, you see a piece, if you see a piece you like, you, you can basically click on the top right hand corner where it says media in the virtual viewing room and it will take you to the online shop where you can see more pictures of the artwork and purchase that piece if you wish. <clears throat> so um, most of the pieces are available for sale, although a few have already sold. Now, I do want to let you know, since it is a virtual show, the artwork ships from the, the artist studio since it's a virtual exhibit. Um, but these are very professional artists and I trust them all implicitly. Um, so I do want to also let you know that nearly all of the pieces are on pre-sale tonight with 10% off the purchase price you see on the website with the code pre-sale. 
So this pre-sale incentive actually expires at midnight tonight. So if you see something you love, don't hesitate. And if you prefer to pay another way or have any other questions, you can just email me at ericcontemporary at gmail.com. And I'm going to post those details in the chat right now so you just have them handy. And um, at any point during the exhibition, you can just scroll right up there again and, um, and check it out. Let's see here if this works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yes, it is there and it worked. Great. So that is kind of the rundown of about the artists' works and how they are um, for sale and everything. Okay, now that that is out of the way, let's dive into the Pre-Raphaelites. So this exhibition is called the, the New Pre-Raphaelites, which to me means the current artists who are working in a similar style and are inspired by similar themes as the original artists movement. So who were they? So the Pre-Raphaelites were a group of young British painters who banded together in 1848 in reaction against what they thought was the stiff historical painting of the Royal Academy and who really sought to express a sincerity in their works and reflection of nature. Their adoption of the name Pre-Raphaelite expressed their admiration for what they saw as the direct and uncomplicated depiction of nature typical of Italian painting before the time of Raphael, which is hence the name Pre-Raphaelites. Although the Pre-Raphaelites' active life um, as, a, as a brotherhood lasted about five years formally, um, its influence on painting and ultimately on the decorative arts was really lasting. The style of the Pre-Raphaelites became known for painting from direct observation of nature and a bohemian and unique costuming of models and also an earnest and sincere hyper-realistic paintings and a sense of romanticism and mystical storytelling. So the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood was originally formed by three Royal Academy students, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, William Holman Hunt, and John Everett Millais. At the time they created the Brotherhood, all were under 25 years of age. Many other artists joined them in their quest to create natural, sincere artwork and an admiration of beauty in all its forms. Their artwork was in many cases inspired by striking muses, which brought their artwork to life. I did do a whole podcast episode on more details. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but uh, they are a very fascinating and complex group of artists, muses, and writers with many characters and they all influence each other. They all hung out together. So if you are curious about learning more details about that historical movement, you can look that up on the Inspired Painter podcast on Spotify, but you are not just here to hear me speak. You definitely want to see the art and talk to the artists. So I just hope that that gives a little bit of background on the inspiration of the Pre-Raphaelites that inspired our era contemporary show, The New Pre-Raphaelites. So this show includes work that is inspired by the same values of the original artists, a sincerity, a closeness to nature, an imaginative spirit, a celebration of the female form, the use of gilding, a sense of romanticism and storytelling. So um, let us dive into the galleries. Um, okay, great. So I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to go to the galleries now and then we will start hearing from the artists. So let me just pull that up. I'm gonna go to Eric Contemporary. Virtual gallery. Okay, so there is three galleries because there's so many works. Um, so this is the first gallery. And I'm going to start sharing my screen with you guys. Here we go. All right, can you guys see that? All right, great. So that's just loading.
100%. Almost there. All right, we're going to enter. Okay, so this is the virtual gallery. I think it came out pretty awesome. <laughs> it's almost like being in a real gallery, right? It's full of friends and um, just imagine that you're stepping into this. Okay, so we're going to start with Arthur Haywood. Okay, great. So Arthur, I see that you are here. So I, you can just um, unmute yourself and okay. you can have the floor. Tell us about your painting. Thank you. So my painting is inspired by one of the stories in J.R.R. Tolkien's book, The Silmarillion. And in this book, the evil Morgoth and the evil spider on Galeon destroy the light from the trees of Alnor. Yet Yavanna's song brought forth one more silver flower from Talperion and one more golden fruit from the tree Laurelin. And the light from these two were preserved as the sun and the moon. So this piece for me was a message of hope and rebirth in a very fantastical way. That's so amazing. Thank you so much, Arthur. I appreciate that. Amazing. All right. So now we're going to, um, we're going to, and Arthur is a Philadelphia artist as well. So um, if you would like, you can also tell like where you're from and um, yeah, where you, where you're at right now. Cause I think people would be interested in learning that. Okay. So next we have Adina Yoon. Is Adina here? Yep. I'm right here. Amazing. Adina, tell us about Birds of Paradise. Hi, everyone. Um, so thank you all for coming, and I'm very excited to show you um, some of my works. I'm actually an artist from Long Island, uh, New York, and I'll be telling you about this piece. So um, this piece is called Birds of Paradise, and it was made during the height of the coronavirus back in April. And as everyone was on lockdown and we found ourselves all isolated from our friends, family, and community, I increasingly looked towards nature to find my inspiration and peace. Um, it was still a time of confusion, sadness, and anger, so I wanted to create something that evoked calmness and joy, hopeful about the possibility that we would all reunite with our loved ones in the near future, uh, just as these yellow-crested cockatoo birds are gathered in a tropical paradise, enjoying and basking in each other's company. And so I wanted this piece to remind us about the joy, wonder, and celebration of life, even during difficult times, and to remind us of always to stay curious. Oh, that is beautiful. I love that. And that's, that's so poignant, especially about, you know, you see these birds and they're, you know, flocking together and they're taking comfort in each other. And that's, that's really poignant, especially you know, now that we can't really socialize as we did. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Okay. And Adina has another one. All right. And then, so this one um, is called the sugar pumpkin. And this white pumpkin piece was inspired by um, a trip that I took to a local farm out on Long Island back last fall. Um, I spotted this pumpkin and it looked really perfectly formed and symmetrical with such a perfect mint green twirl twirly stem. And then as I held it in my hands, it felt like very cool, the weight of it. And I was really amazed um, at how the white skin looked so powdery and sugary, almost like a powdered donut and had this beautiful glowing halo effect in the fall light. So I just really enjoyed that and I took it home that day to paint its portrait. And um, pumpkins and other seemingly ordinary objects that we see in everyday life might seem simple to us, but I think if we just pay more closely, um, pay more attention to it closely, they can have this extraordinary and even truly magical effect on us. So that's what I wanted everyone to take away. Thank you so much, Adina. That's amazing. So cool. Thank you. All right, so next, we have Adrian Amiro, and um, Adrian is not able to be here today, so I actually have something that she wrote. So I'm just going to read that out. Okay, so Adrian Amiro is an artist from Texas, and her paintings are inspired by dreams, colors, mythology, and stories. And this one is called Starlight, and it is watercolor on wood panel, six by six inches, and um, it's a cradled panel, so it, it doesn't need a frame. So that is Starlight. 
All right. So next we have Elaine. Elaine Sehar. Elaine, are you here? Pretty sure she's here. Let's just see here. Elaine, are you here? Yes, I am. Oh, yay. Oh, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I just, I just unmuted myself, which helps. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. So, so um, very excited to be here. I have three paintings in the show and I have been a pre-Raphaelite lover for close to 20 years. I actually went to the Red House and my last trip to England and spent an entire day there, which is a house that was built by William Morris where they used to gather quite frequently. This first painting that you see in front of you is called Nature's Dialogue and it is a watercolor painting and this was actually the photo shoot was done at Morris Arboretum. So for those of you who live in the Philadelphia area, most of you are probably familiar where that is. And this was um, in tribute to the Pre-Raphaelites and their love for nature and kimonos. So I just, uh, that's really all I wanted to say about that one, Jessica, if we want to move on to the next sure. painting. All right. This painting is called The Museum Visitor. And this was a little bit of a daydream in um, the respect of people used to get, it was very dressed up to go to art receptions and to see different paintings in museums. And this was just my take on um, an African-American woman being in a beautiful Victorian dress and being at a reception such as this because um, unlikely that this would have really been the case at that given time. So this is, this is a tribute, again, to the uh, flavor of the Pre-Raphaelites, but my vision of how I would have wanted it to be for all, all people. Amazing. Thank you, Elaine. And then we okay. have the last one. Yeah. And then this painting is titled Lily. As most of you probably know, the Pre-Raphaelites loved redheads. They called them stunners and many, many of their models were redheads. So this is my tribute to that aspect of the Pre-Raphaelites. I have, she actually does have this color hair and she is one of my main models and she's gorgeous. And um, this was a tribute to that. So that, that's it, Jessica. Okay, thank you so much, Elaine. I appreciate it. And these are all watercolor, watercolor on paper. Yes. All right. So on to the next. So then we have Anna Sanchez. And forgive me if I pronounce any of your names wrong. Um, yes, you can just, you know, correct me. Okay, so this is by Anna. Anna, are you here? Yeah, here I am. Hey, Amazing. Hi. So I'm Ana Sanchez. I live in LA right now, but I grew up in Colombia in South America. Um, so this piece, the mother, is a nine by twelve oil and linen painting done in 2018 as part of my female icon series. My inspiration came from the ancient archetype of the maiden, mother, and crone, also known as the triple goddess. And each one of these represent a stage in our lives and a cycle of the year, therefore. Now for this piece, the mother, she is the full moon. She is the creativity, maturity. She's a creator and an artist and an educator. So my model is actually my painting mentor, which is who I saw as a model like in my creative journey. So, and I wanted to kind of have my own little personal icon um, for an, a female artist. And I hope she gives everyone like peace and support in their own creative journeys. Amazing, thank you so much, Anna. Appreciate that. All right, so next we have um, Benjamin Shambach. Benjamin, are you here? I am here. Amazing. So, well, I'm Ben Shambach and uh, I'm in Mobile, Alabama. And this painting is a uh, oil painting on copper. And uh, it came from, uh, I took a, 
a group of students to Italy for a study abroad trip because I'm a, a college professor. And uh, we stayed in a city in Italy called Orvieto and it's this like magical sort of hilltop city. And there's a cathedral on top of the, in the middle of the city on top of this giant hill. And the sculptures that you see in the painting are a couple of the sculptures that like are over the facade on the cathedral. And I was really struck by these, um, these sculptures, but they're like, you know, 40 feet off the ground. So you really don't get to see them. But when we, we ended up going into the museum that's attached to the, the church, um, these, the actual original sculptures, the ones on the church are reproductions. The originals are in the museum. So I got to be like sort of eye level face to face with them. And it was just awesome to get to see them so close. So I just photographed as much as I could. And um, when I got home, I, the, the lilies in the picture, the flowers, I grow those at my house. So um, I wanted to take these figures that I was kind of struck by and, and get to play with the patina. And you see all the, the different types of patinas that are all over the place and combine them with this um, sort of field of lilies that would never happen, but you know, mm -hmm. it's all part of the pre-Raphaelite kind of figure in landscape you know, yes. scenario that they loved so much, so. Yeah, amazing. And it, it almost, it kind of brings them to life too. It looks like they're like walking through this field. Right. Yeah, very cool. Thank you so much for sharing. I've, I've been to that hilltop city too. It is. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's really magical. It feels unreal like when you're there. So that's, that, that's so cool you were able to be there. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Okay. So um, next we have Akane. And you can correct me if I'm saying that wrong. Um, but I think I saw you here. Yes, it's, it's here. <clears throat> Hi, my Hello. name is Akane, Akane Ogura. I'm from okay. Japan. Um, uh, I'm currently uh, based in New York City. Um, so my painting right here called Paddle, I did this painting in 2018 and it was inspired by the nurturing power of flowers. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm always amazed by how flowers nourish us both uh, physically and psychologically. Uh, the essence of flower were used for natural remedies and cosmetic purpose since ancient times and we are still using it in everyday life. So um, their aromatic scents help, help me to elevate certain moods and reach imaginative places. So I think that's really amazing and um, I wanted to represent the organic form of beauty and the mystery, and also the delicate velvet-like textures and the translucent quality of flower petals. That's all. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. I love that. And um, she she kind of does look like she's at a spa now that I now that I am thinking of it. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, this model is um, my friend and she likes to put like um, her scarf like in like really unique way and I thought that was beautiful. So yeah, and I like that how it looks like, you know, she was came out of spa. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. And this is mixed media. Can you tell us a little bit more about the media? Yes, yeah, so I use, uh, this is acrylic base. And also I like to um, use uh, oil pastels and like color pencils and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I paste, um, I made this canvas. Um, I pasted the, um, the piece of cotton onto the canvas board and then I made it um, kind of like the texture, the way um, that uh, vintage kind of look. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, so next we have Alexandra Levasor. Alexandra, are you here? She said she may not be here. 
just want to check before I read her thing. Okay, so I'll just read what she gave me. Uh, this magical painting by Alexandra. She says, in my work as an artist, I am interested in creating um, organic scenes, picturing an ideal relationship between the living beings and their environment. My intention is to illustrate the enigmatic beauty of nature and of life on earth and to talk to the consciousness of the observer. This painting is entitled Kisses from Atkama and was inspired by the famous desert and by the music of a talented French musician called Astre. Beautiful, and this is an acrylic painting on a wooden panel and it is cradled so it doesn't need a frame, although it could be framed. It's very, very magical. I love the landscape. Okay, so next we have Ayuesh Agarwal, and I probably butchered that, but Ayuesh, are you here? Okay, he said that he may not be here. So I'm just gonna read what he said. Okay, these pieces are part of a new series, Black and Red which seeks to address the relationship between the human nature and the sublime. Symbolically, red is the color associated with passion, energy, courage, love, and black with power, fear, mystery, and the void. And it has various connotations depending on the culture and tradition. The meaning of the work relates at the bottom, the human experience of fire and darkness, the burning energy of human desires. Our desire is but a fire lighting up the vast darkness around us. So this drawing is called Precipice and it emerged from life drawing with a model. But he says, I wanted to push it beyond just an observational study. So I started inventing the background, the dress the model was wearing to convey the idea of a pivotal moment in one's life. I was inspired by the portrait of Juan, Juan de Pareja by Velasquez. And that is Precipice. And um, you can really see the amazing details if you go onto our website. Um, you can't really see how amazing this uh, portrait is, but if you go onto the website, there's some detail shots. And then this second one by Ayuesh is also an incredible painting. Um, and I definitely invite you to take a look at this one on the website as well. But this one is called The Red Bench. And he says, this was inspired by Rothko and how the flat, vibrant colors express the energy that I was looking for in my work. And I wanted to find a balance between academicism and abstraction. So that is the red bench. And these, this is an oil painting. Wonderful. So next we have Caro. Caro, are you here? I am here. Yay, take it away. Hello everyone, I'm Caro. I am a craft artist based in Brooklyn, New York, and I work in the mediums of embroidery and metals. Um, so this is Duin. Duin comprises 240 hours of labor. It is hand embroidered on organza and then sewn into a double nested brass frame that I fabricated and pierced. Um, so the inspiration for Duin was born from a solo bike trip I did across the Netherlands. Um, the heather, the dunes, uh, the blur of green as the light washes over you and the pace of the bike alters your perception. So I wanted to depict the details amid the blur. Um, and I've done that with thousands of French knots with beads, tubes, sequins, um, and thread. Amazing, thank you. And I love hearing the inspiration behind it. That really gives it more context. And um, this is also, this is all, this also looks really, really pretty when it's installed and you can see the light around it. So there's a lot of, there's a lot more pictures on the website of how this looks installed so you can see it. Um, but I invite you to take a look at that as well. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank you. Okay, so next we have Cornelius Collins. You know, he said he might not be able to make it, but 
Just wanted to check. Cornelius, are you here? I'm here. Yes. I made it. How are you? Good, good, thank you, good, thank you. Good. Thanks for the whole event, this is great. All right, so um, this, uh, well, my name is Cornelius Collins, and I'm an oil painter from Southern New Hampshire. And uh, this is a painting that I actually did with my wife. And um, when I was kind of composing this piece, um, I was really into some of the Italian Venetian painters, specifically uh, Giovanni Bellini, and looking a lot of uh, a lot of um, his um, kind of Madonna and child um, compositions. Um, so it's a combination of painting from life, um, a lot of my imagination, and some photo reference, and I kind of use everything to kind of stitch the, the image together. Um, and since everybody asks, I'll just say that that object in the lower right hand corner is actually one of my wife's um, art pieces. She's a ceramic artist and she did this series called Stroking Eggs. So because everyone's always wondering what that is. Um, and that's it for this piece. Amazing. I love it. It, it feels very pre-Raphaelite because of, well, I mean, she has red hair, so we have that. And I then, know, yeah. <laughs> and then she's outside and it's kind of like, I don't know, I love it. I think it's, it's very pre-Raphaelite looking. So then we have our second one for Nick Cornelia. Yes, this is a friend of ours. Um, and I was really um, kind of wanted to challenge myself with trying an oval format um, for a painting, which I've actually I've never done, because I wanted to see how that those parameters would really affect my decision making um, while um, just uh, co composing the picture. And um, I also really wanted to try something a bit more formal and elegant, um, a little bit kind of leaning towards some of those 18th century French portrait painters. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and again, it's the same thing where a lot of this was, she was there, I kind of set some things up, like that kind of green scarf I set up after I got a little mannequin to kind of do and wow. various things. But um, yeah, that's about it for this one too. Amazing. I love the little, um, the little flower you have that she's holding as well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was one of those last, um, I came at the very end of the process there, and I just had a couple different flowers I was trying to figure out which one I wanted her to have, and I just kind of stumbled upon that one, and I really liked the colors and the scale of it, so I ended up working out. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we have um, David Troncoso, and David has three pieces in the show, and I want to show you the pieces first. David is not able to be here, but he does have a video for us to play, so we are going to play a little video. Um, so this one first is The Maiden and Frame, and he says about this one. So David actually, uh, this is oil on panel painting and he hand carved and gilded this pine frame. And in the words of David, Maiden and Frame is a self-contained homage to the medieval times and to chivalric ideals. In the painting, she is holding a pink flower, a symbolic representation of love. The frame is of a castle with an arched door and crenellations with adornments inspired by medieval altarpieces and furniture. Just stunning, amazing work. And then we have his next one, which is called St. Barbara, Ink and Chalk on Paper. This is um, in the words of the artist. St. Barbara is ink and chalk on paper and is an exercise in sfumato, which expresses the subtle gradations of dark into light. I find her story particularly compelling. And that is also a frame he made. And then this one, Ave Maria. And no, this is not taken from the museum. This was made by a contemporary artist, which I just, just blew my mind. Um, so this is oil on panel painting and hand carved and gilded pine frame, 41 by 28 inches. inches. So in the words of the artist, the virgin reading and frame is inspired by the great Madonnas of the Quattro Centro era. She is surrounded by lilies, a purity long associated with her. The painting has dual meaning. Mary is reading a book 
which contains a small copy of a Raphael painting of her with child, and in doing so is learning of herself and her foretold prophecy. This image also represents my continuing of the classical tradition, and the painting within a painting is a nod to the old masters who so greatly inspire my work. Okay, and now we will hear from David. I'm going to stop screen sharing for a second here, and then I will find his, here we go. Then we're going to screen share again, but a different one. Okay. Here we go. Hi, my name is David Chicoso. I'm a painter, craftsman, and woodworker here in my studio in Houston, New York. I'm really excited to be part of the Newport Rackley exhibition hosted by Eric Contemporary and be associated with all these other talented artists. The pre raps especially the work of Edward Burton Jones and Lynn Lawrence, have greatly inspired the artwork I make today. Uh, their, their interest in history, craft, and beauty has played a huge part in the way I look at artwork and make my own. This painting of the Virgin Medium is one of three paintings I have on the online exhibition. This painting and frame harkens back to the early Renaissance, which inspired the Pre-Raphaelite's work. This painting is about creative remembrance and awakening to a place that is not of our time, but somewhere that is ancient and eternal. Using historic tools and techniques, I spent nearly a year painting, carving, and gilding this piece to its highly finished state. For more information on my artwork, you can visit davidtrucosoart.com, write a long illustrated article detailing my craft from start to finish. Um, I thank Eric Contemporary for including me in the show, and I look forward to seeing uh, more work from all these other great artists. All right, and that was David. So, I'm going to stop sharing here. All right. Thank you, David. Even though you were not here, you were here in spirit. And you have to look at his work. It's totally amazing. All right, so we're going to share the screen again and continue with the show. Um, here we go. Okay, so who do we have next? Next, we have Eileen. Okay, so we have Eileen Kennedy. Eileen, are you here? I'm here. Yay! Yes, Hi. tell us about your work, Eileen. Hi, my name's Eileen Kennedy. Um, I, I'm an artist in uh, Red Bank, New Jersey. Um, I work in uh, early Renaissance medium of egg tempera. Uh, so this is an egg tempera on wood panel, and um, it's called Wetlands. And um, I was working on a series of paintings that sort of explored this sort of idyllic childhood that I had growing up in uh, what was then uh, semi-rural coastal New Jersey. Um, so uh, these are the wetlands where we used to go play um, after school. And so you can see different, um, you can see jacks in the pulpit and skunk cabbage and other, um, uh, other plants. And, you know, I wanted to put figures in, into those landscapes. So um, this is, I used a model uh, to, to pose for the, the large figure in the foreground. And, uh, and she actually posed on my dining room table. <laughs> um, and, and then I, I just compose the entire scene pretty much uh, out of my head. So, uh, um, so this is uh, an 18 by 24 piece. And she has red hair, so. <laughs> there you go, amazing. She's, she, and that is her hair, so. <laughs> I love to paint her, so. Yeah. Amazing, thank you. I love it, I love the, um, the details on the cabbages, they look three-dimensional, very cool. Okay, so tell us about this one. And um, this piece um, is called Circus Summer. Um, uh, it's unfortunate we've lost a lot of the detail in this image, but um, um, when I was a child uh, growing up, uh, there was a farm across the street, a field across the street from my house, and the circus would come every summer and set up in the field. Um, and you could see way in the background there, the circus tent. Uh, I actually took um, 
you took out of my mom's photo album. She had taken photos of it. This was back in the 60s. Um, and then after, after um, the circus left, they would only be in town for about three days. My sisters and I would all play circus in the backyard. So mm -hmm. that's, um, the, that's the story. And it's the same model as in, as in the other piece. And the children I just pretty much fabricated, so. <laughs> okay, amazing. They look very acrobatic. Um, yes, and so I just wanted to draw everyone's attention to up here up at the top right where it says media next to circus summer summer media is the thing that you click um on the website not on zoom but you know if you go to this separately on the website you click media and it'll take you directly to that piece um and and it'll it has more detail shots and um that have um, a little bit of a little bit more detail so this program that i'm using um does an amazing job of a virtual space, but you do lose some of the detail. So I would invite everyone to look at the detail. Thank you so much, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. Okay, so next we have um, Eric Popel. Um, now this is an amazing piece. I mean, it's just humongous. So um, Eric is not able to be with us today, but he's here in spirit. Um, so this is called Tuckerman Ravine, and this is a brand new piece for Eric. And um, he was inspired to do a painting of this after going on a ski trip to Tuckerman Ravine. And this is an original piece, uh, 32 inches by 50 inches. And um, yeah, it's oil on canvas, and it is available. And um, you know, the 10% the incentive for um, for uh, pre-sale and tonight at um, at midnight, and you know this is this is a larger piece, so that's a significant discount if you want to take advantage of that. Just saying. Okay, so thank you, Eric, and Eric um, is an amazing painter. So next we have uh, another artist here, Francis Gaffney. Uh, Francis, are you here? I'm here. Can you hear me, Jessica? Yes, yes, I can. Okay. Um, I'm Francis Gaffney. I'm in the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York. So I want to thank you, Jessica, for this opportunity to wear my favorite dress yes. and to show my painting. <laughs> so I've written something very short. Um, the Blue Knight is an archetypal figure. She symbolizes a fully integrated human that is a queen, a servant, a human and a god all at the same time. Together, these attributes represent a new emerging structure of human consciousness that finds its power in the human imagination. So um, I've been inspired by the philosophy of a man named Jean Gebser, who was writing in France in the 1950s. And this painting is based on some of his philosophy. Amazing. So thank you, Jessica. Yeah, you're welcome. And. Um... Yeah, this is an amazing painting. I love the, the shine on her sword. And she, she kind of reminds me of Joan of Arc a little bit. I get that vibe, but like a little bit more modern. Um, yeah. yeah, so amazing. Thank you so much. And again, people, everyone should check out the detail shots of this one because you can't really get it all here. All right, so next we have uh, Fred. Fred Wessel with his piece, Sagittarius Study, Speak of the devil, Jean D'Arc. <laughs> oh, my work, I live in Massachusetts and I'm a temper painter. And like so many of the other people that have talked before me, I went to Italy in 1984 to kind of track down my roots, the Italian side of my family, and fell in love with the Italian Renaissance painters like the Pre-Raphaelites did. Mm. And came back and it changed my whole outlook and my whole um, point of view. This is an egg tempera painting that was a study for one of the constellation pieces that I've done. You'll see one of the constellations later on. And it started off as a study. Um, this is N uh, Nellie Pryor, who is my good friend, Scott Pryor, a realist painter's daughter, and Kurt Vonnegut Jr.'s granddaughter. <laughs> and she came over to pose for Sagittarius for me. And um, I wanted to try some different techniques that um, 
in the goal that I hadn't done before. One was graffito, which is um, painting over the gold in the frieze in back of her, in the uh, panel in back of her. And then um, scratching the design through the paint to let the gold show through. And there's also a um, rose compass that has a series of lines that vibrate and move around the compass as you move through different burnishings. Uh, oh. Both were inspired by um, Fra Angelico's painting in Cortona, Italy. I spent a lot of time in Cortona. Um, so this, this, it started off as a study to try to do that. And then I kind of fell in love with the painting as I went along and decided to make it into an actual painting mm -hmm. of Joan of Arc, Jean d'Arc. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I, I am in love with this painting. And what I think really gets me is the two different blues that you use. They're such different blues, but they complement each other so well. Um, so yeah, amazing painting. And uh, we have some more paintings of yours, but they are in the next gallery. So I'm gonna stop screen sharing just for a second. And then we're gonna go to the next gallery here. All right. Um, just looking at everyone's... Uh, yes, I'm, I'm uh, looking at everyone's comments, making sure there's no... Uh, Quest, burning questions. Okay, so we're going to go to the next one. Okay. Right, so, part two. And I'm going to screen share again here. Here we go. Part two. Give it a second to load. This is so amazing that you're all here and talking about your work. So amazing. All right. Okay, so Next, we have another one by Fred. So Fred, why don't you tell us about this one? This is one of a series of paintings I did on the constellations. You can't really see it in this um, image here. I think if you look at the detail, you'll see the star charts in the background. Um, I love Vermeer working figures against the flat backgrounds of maps and found a way to do this with my goals, different goals and silvers and engraving in the gold and burnishing in the gold. Um, and I did a whole series of constellations where my models are holding reference objects uh, that refer back to the constellation that is engraved and tooled in the sky and back of them. This is the constellation cancer. Amazing. Thank you. And yes, go look at the detail shots of this one. It's quite incredible. And we have this one. And this again, like many people before me um, mentioned, during this pandemic, I just started to deal with painting some of the beautiful things around me. And I did, I have been working continuously on a series of um, flower icon paintings. Um, making the majesty of um, a flower and presenting it in a way that maybe some of the early Renaissance painters might have presented it. Incredible. I, I had a question about this one, actually. How did you get it so that um, it looks like they're raised, almost three-dimensional patterning? Um, yeah, there's a, a technique, a gilding technique called pastilla where you actually build up the surface of the panel and then gild over it. And those are gems that are um, inserted in the panels. Again, a nod to the uh, medieval painters who often did it with some of their paintings. Amazing, thank you so much. Very cool. Okay, so next we have, um, next we have Jelena Pavlenko. Jelena, are you here? 
but she may not be here. So um, we may have to, let me just see here. Uh, okay, so um, yes, we're going to share the screen again. And I actually have something to read for her. Her paintings are also quite amazing. So let's do this one right here. This one's called the pink scarf. Okay, so Jolina says, one day I got the great idea to paint a little landscape park in its secret life. Though the park is man-made, I felt it became a part of Earth's beauty. I pictured a light haze, sunny light, flowing through the trees and a young maiden that is strolling and dreaming about love. A pink scarf on her shoulder is to symbolize her hope of love. A girl passes by, looks like she swims in the dew and very possibly she will become a beautiful statue in the park. And this is Oil on Canvas 16 by 20. And then we have another one here by Jolina. Very beautiful. This one's called A Lily's Guard. I imagined a garden with patio where a caring gardener cares for the flowers. A lily is a very beautiful flower and has many meanings in perception of flowers in Western culture. Even you may say that some meanings are contradictory. At the same time, symbols of the lily carry the meaning of life and death, virginity and fertility, the, virtue, the virtues of a man and a woman, modesty and luxury. In one word, the lily is a symbol of perfection. The words of William Shakespeare in his play, King John, make a hint that there is no need to perfect a thing that does not need that action. To gild the gold of the highest standard and to color a lily is a waste of time and a funny excess of effort. Certainly someone has to guard such wealth. So I drew a small guardian who is always on duty. And I just thought that was so cute. And if you look at the detail shots of this, the rabbit's fur, is um it just looks so soft it's amazing and then we have a third one by jolina pink roses so when i lived in new york i often passed time in central park i was subdued by the bas relief sculptures that i found in the park interweaving of live roses and sculpture stone branches have fascinated me and i've gotten a strong desire to show the viewers how the beauty of nature and artifacts complement each other and being united do, do create something new and unique. The landscape in the background of my work is to call the spectator to start a journey and find that wonderful corner of the earth. And I think that this is an amazing painting. So three-dimensional, really feels like you're there. And so next we have Hannah, Hannah Magdal. Hannah, are you here? Okay, I'm just gonna check the chat. Let's see here. Okay. Looks like she's not here for this. Um, if you are here and you figure it out, feel free to interject at any time. But, um, so this is Hannah Magdal. So this is an oil on canvas painting, 20 by 20 inches. Um, and yes, frame is not included. She's holding a, um, a turtle. So um, yeah, this is a beautiful painting by Hannah. And um, this also needs to be seen in detail. The details are quite amazing. Okay, so next we have Hillary, Hillary Couture. Hillary's not able to be here, but she did provide a video for us, but I'm gonna show you all three of her works before we go to her video. So this is called Always finding comfort in my special place, 30 by 40 inches. And then this one here is, um, she actually did a picture of me. I was so flattered and that was so special. Um, she slowly appears from the misty forest, watercolor on paper. And, or I'm sorry, that is pastel, that was pastel. And then this one is pastel and gold leaf on paper. And this is called Thinking of French Gardens in the Spring. Very beautiful. 
All right, so I am going to share with you the video that she provided. And let me just pull that up. Uh, here we go. All right. So here is Hillary. Can you guys all see Hillary? Okay, great. I share my work with you for this fabulous show. This first piece is an oil painting and it's 40 by 30. It's a gallery wrap canvas that has the image wrapped around the sides and the top and the bottom. So when you look at it, it has a 3D appearance and it's all part of the image. It's an interesting painting because it started out as another painting. And one day I was going through some of my work and I looked at it and I thought, I'm not really that happy with it. So I started painting right over the top and this was actually sort of an, an imagination. Um, so I was trying to express the feeling of contour light and also wanted my bravura to be strong and have a lot of texture. So there's thick and thin feet and it has the feeling of being uh, depicted in the golden hour of light with the light behind her and some dab of light coming through the tree. I love figurative art and most of my work has a figure in it. And this piece was, my influence was the gardens in France, as well as Mucha and some of the uh, painters from the era of the uh, Art Nouveau era. And this model was actually painted from my backyard and my husband and I took a trip to France right before COVID-19. And so we were driving through the countryside and I saw a lot of beautiful gardens. And so that was the inspiration for this piece. This is a pastel on paper and it also has gold leaf in it as well. So it's a mixed media piece. This final piece expresses my romantic sens sensibility to art. And this is also a pastel. And all of you that know Jessica probably can recognize her in this piece. It's a pastel on paper. It's 25 by 18. And this was a made up, uh, made up imagery of the background, but from a picture of Jessica at one of her art openings, I just love the way she dresses in the vintage clothing. And I feel that the way that I depicted the tool on the dress was pretty strong in this piece and also giving it that misty forest quality that has that romantic feeling to it. All right, and that was Hillary. Thank you so much, Hillary. Um, yeah, when she showed me that, I was I was so amazed and flattered and um, yeah, I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> um, okay, great. So uh, next we have um, Jason Blake, and I'm going to uh, share the screen with you once more. Um, Jason, are you here? Are you here, Jason? All right, well, Jason is a Philadelphia artist. He is a very talented photographer and um, he takes a lot of his inspiration from, um, from traditional paintings. So his um, photography often looks like paintings. And this one is called Kiss of a Summer Afternoon. And um, I just really want to include this one because I thought the, um, the composition was very unusual. Um, I love the way that she's kind of draped over the rock and um, I just thought it, it fit so well into the pre-Raphaelite aesthetic. And this is a photographic archival inkjet print. 
This is um, uh, an edition of five, so it's hand signed by the artist. And um, this is nine by 15 inches. So thank you, Jason, for being part of the show. And we have Jennifer Balkin next. And I know I saw Jennifer here. So Jennifer, take the floor. Hi, hi everybody. Um, this is my very first virtual exhibition. So thank you for the invitation, Jessica. And really nice to be exhibiting with everybody here. Um, so I did, this is one of three pieces that are in the show. And they were all part of uh, this series on um, the mother, um, the mother figure and the power of, the power that a woman um, ends up uh, sort of taking on and, and being and, uh, and, and living through when she becomes a mother. And so um, this is pretty neat because um, a friend of mine actually had, it was about this time where I, had been working on the series and um, a friend who had never posed for, for art before said she'd love to pose for me. And this is my friend Renee. And so I got, I thought, oh my gosh, you'd be amazing in the series that I'm working on. So, so she did. And, um, and so uh, this was, um, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, I guess this, yeah, this was not the first piece that I did of, of these couple, but, um, but uh, this was probably my favorite because it was just her. And, um, and so this particular painting um, is entitled I Am. And, um, and it's, uh, you know, it's definitely a nod with all the little pooty flying in the background or, or all around her in her atmosphere. Um, a nod to Raphael and Donatello and, and these painters that employed uh, this, uh, the, the symbol. And um, I really liked the juxtaposition of having this, you know, really strong woman of color in this, um, with these symbols of, of an era that, um, where you just, you wouldn't typically see um, a model like this in this, uh, in, in this context. And so um, I, I, and it's, you know, she's, um, uh, she's sort of holding ground and holding her ground um, and her strength and her power as all the, the world spins around her. And yeah, that's what this piece is about. Amazing, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, so um, next we have this one, Protector. So, um, so yeah, so the other pieces are, uh, have uh, that I, and two of them are here, these other ones are um, including uh, one of her children. And so I wanted in these, pe in these particular um, uh, compositions, I wanted the child to be masked and covered. And so um, it, you know, it's really about the mother and her youngling. And, uh, and specifically um, the child is wearing a crow as a, uh, as a crow head. And I love incorporating um, animal in imagery in some of my work um, and some of my disguise work. And so the crow has uh, historically um, uh, connoted a lot of, you know, there's has just a rich history of uh, culturally and different cultures, both um, wisdom and mystery and it also can be both dark and light um and so i just love what that particular animal represented and so there she is um with her youngling um and, and protecting and holding her amazing and this one is um a similar uh subject matter but is there anything further you want to say about it um this one uh you know all i guess uh in addition to the you know what i've said about the others um this was really fun technically speaking and uh and i just i really just um was playing with technique and surface um and um thanks guys i'm seeing all chat comments pop in uh and um i you know there's some sometimes it's there's what you don't put down on the canvas that can complete the story, so to speak. I mean, y'all all are visual artists, so you, you get that. Um, and so I, I loved just 
letting her hair kind of become this mountain. Um, and um, and in while I was working on this piece, I was thinking a lot about um, Klimt actually. Some of um, you know some of the German expressionists who were playing with some of this kind of um, pre uh, presentation of medium. And so I, yeah, I just basically let the paint run and loved the unfinished, but still like volume that that took on. Um, and so that was a lot of, that was a, a fun thing that I hadn't done before in this, in this particular piece. Yes, yes, amazing. Or, um, yeah. yeah, it's like a happy accident. Yeah, those are the best. <laughs> I love those. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks so much, Jessica. I really appreciate being here. Yeah, no problem. All right. So next we have um, Jenny Brown. And Jenny was not able to be here. Um, but she did uh, give me something to read for you. So she has three pieces. I'll show you them all first. Um, she loves Celestial Gardens 1. So these are mixed media on cabinet cards. And um, so she used these antique Victorian cabinet cards to paint on and mm -hmm. she did these mixed media. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool. Um, all different kinds. And here's her third one and they all come framed. So this is what Jenny says. My name is Jenny Brown and I'm a visual artist based in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm thrilled to have my three works, She Loves Celestial Gardens, parts one and three, in this exhibition. I've used old cabinet cards to create emotional portraits of the sitter and highlight their various loves from the natural and spiritual world. This creation takes the place of the traditional stage and sometimes stuffy portrait, and instead focuses on more lush, evocative representation of the person. Work is a combination of pen, ink, acrylic, an antique collage. All right, thank you so much, Jenny. All right, so next we have Jess. Jess Polk. Jess, are you here? Hello. Hi. Hello, everybody. My name's Jess. Uh, I'm in Philly, um, and this piece is titled Natural Heart. Um, I feel that love and nature, they go hand in hand. So considering the pre-Raphaelites, I was very inspired to represent that in this piece. So I used branches and leaves to provide the structure of kind of like an anatomical heart, um, portraying various couples walking around. Um, and this piece measures eight by 10 inches and it's on wood panel and wired and ready to hang. Amazing, thank you so much, Jess. I thank you. <laughs> All right, so next we have Julie Ann Junker. Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of the ex exhibition. Yeah, it's okay. I've been okay. For, pre for years and years, so this was really special. This piece is titled Metamorphosis, and it looks like a typo on the spelling of metamorphosis there. Oh, probably on my sorry. part. But my anyway, fault. we all know that word, we all know what it means. It's part of a series, and the name of the series is Transcendence. And I didn't realize I was creating a series till I was on the third painting. But each one of them, what it's speaking to is the, the inner process of inner healing, transcending or overcoming trauma, abuse, whatever, whatever life has brought someone's way. And so the different stages are the different paintings. This one, Metamorphosis, is about being reborn inside the cocoon like thing that's around her and transcending whatever whatever you've been thrown overcoming that coming to that zen place of peace and growth and hope incredible thank you so much julianne beautiful and i'll i'll fix that typo i apologize for that okay i just saw it now no biggie <laughs> All right, so um, next I'm going to share some things about my pieces. So um, switching hats for a second. So uh, my name is Jessica Libor and this piece of mine is called The Call. And it is a large oil painting that is inspired by um, the story of Joan of Arc, hearing her voices in the garden. 
I was always inspired by the painting of Joan of Arc in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's like huge, it's probably like 20 feet wide um, in this one gallery. And I always love to stare at it whenever I go there. So I wanted to do kind of a take on that. So I posed for the piece and I had a lot of fun painting the greenery. And I tried to keep the colors very pre raphaelite um, by looking at Millet's Ophelia as I painted it. So this piece is cradled on panel, so a frame is not necessary. And um, you can't really see the um, details here, so I would encourage you to look at the, the detail shots. Um, okay, so next we have Epiphany. So this is a recently completed piece, um, oil and gold leaf on panel 20 by 16. Um, so this is a smaller oil painting on panel with accents of genuine gold leaf. And this piece is inspired by the Annunciation paintings. And I wanted that same feeling of spiritual wonder and beauty to it. I posed the model and used one of my vintage dresses and we took the reference photos in a garden near my house. And I used lilies in the model's hands and thought that the sheer drape of her garment catching the light was able to bring a sense of light and spiritual beauty to the piece. And that is Epiphany. And then this one is Wonder. So Wonder is a very large painting, 72 inches high, that is meant to be hung tapestry style. And it is hung from a bar that is mounted on the wall, which is included with the piece. So I painted this piece thinking about the feeling of being overwhelmed by the beauty of nature until you feel like you become one with it. And I imagine that the model is feeling beautiful and delighted as she looks around her like the queen of her own garden. And this is oil on loose canvas and it hangs like a tapestry. Um, okay. And next we have um, Karen, Karen Renson. Karen, are you here? Yep, hello. Hi. Um, so this piece, I, I mean, honestly, the main motivator for it was a challenge to do all that detail in the flowers. Mm -hmm. um, I did this around March or April, so at that time needed some distraction. So <laughs> kind of threw myself into doing a very detailed background and also was just drawn to the idea of drawing or depicting a figure that was very peaceful and sort of like reflective expression. Mm, yeah, she looks like she's like loving being in all those images. Amazing. And then you have a second one. So tell us about this. Yeah, so this one, again, really drawn to sort of this, this like meditative expression on the face. And with this piece, I was really interested in figuring out how I could combine the geometric shapes with the organic shapes of the, the woman in the sky. So the lines are in gold foil, and it actually took a number of um, tests to figure out how that was going to work um, to get them so clean and so uh you know straight on the canvas so a little trial and error but it ended up i'm, I'm pleased with how it ended up so it's yeah a little exploration of shapes yeah amazing thank it's you so much art artist choice I have this <laughs> oh uh let me just figure out um something here okay so we're gonna go to the other artist in a second um, okay, so go back here. All right, so next we have Kathleen Carr. All right, Kathleen, are you here? Yes, hi, I'm here. Can you hi. hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Kathleen. Uh, thanks, Jessica. I'm delighted to be part of this show uh, because my work has always been um, inspired by the pre-Raphaelites. Um, I'm an artist working just outside of Washington, D.C. in Maryland, so for geographic reasons, that's, that's where I am. Um, and I wrote a few things just to try to keep on track. Um, so for this painting, it's called In the Elysian Fields. Um, it's oil and wood panel. Um, my work in this piece in particular is directly inspired by the pre-Raphaelites um, and here especially with John Everett Millet's um, painting of Ophelia. 
Um, my style is informed by the Priyafa it's in its aesthetic subject matter and use of symbolism. So like the Priyafa, it's, I've depicted a mythological character here. This is Venus. She's the embodiment of beauty and, and the personification of it. So this painting is about the need for beauty in the modern world. And one that perhaps uh, the world sometimes places too much emphasis on it, utilitarianism, and it forgets the need for beauty. You know, the human spirit has a need for beauty. Um, and beauty has this ability to console and to heal. Um, so I was trying to bring that out in this, this painting um, as a narrative. So here we have beauty reclining in a field of chamomile flowers, which are known for their healing properties and natural beauty. Um, her gaze is contemplative and introspective, um, perhaps even melancholic. Uh, and one wonders if she feels maybe forgotten um, in front of her, you'll see is a black swallowtail butterfly. Uh, black may suggest mourning, but the butterfly is always a sign of renewal and something I believe beauty helps foster. So my hope was to create an evocative reminder that we, we all need beauty uh, and its role is far more than just decorative and um, ornamental. So that's, that's what I had to, that's what I was trying to do with this piece. Amazing, incredible, I love this piece. Thank the you. It's just amazing and I encourage you all to look at the detail shot. And um, thanks, I, I was, saw it was on the flyer and I was, I was so pleased, thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome, of course. Um, so for this painting, this was more of a straight portrait um, and I wrote up a little bit for this too, just to keep my thoughts straight because sometimes I just start rambling when I'm talking, so <laughs> forgive me. So this painting is called Kira with a Pearl Earring. Uh, it references the Pre-Raphaelites in its aesthetic, um, but it's more of a portrait that is employing rich patterns and lifelike detail that helps communicate something about the sitter. Um, it's a depiction of my niece, Kira, um, and the title is pl a play, it's a play off of Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring, as is her turning gesture, but in style and approach, it's more like the Pre-Raphaelites. So for this portrait, I selected fabrics, pose, and expression uh, that I felt would communicate something about the very feminine and calm demeanor of Kira. I was trying to communicate who she was by these various poses, patterns, um, and details. Um, I was attempting to show her gentleness, but then also her, her drive and her clothing. So taking a slightly more modern approach, um, but this is why we see the, the blue damask, which is more elegant and calm. And then it's countered by the riot of the red and the off shoulder top, um, which is a nod to Kira's spunk drive and sense of humor and more of a, a modern girl of today. So that that's, was my intention with this painting. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Jessica. All right, so next we have Catherine. Catherine, are you here? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm Catherine Kincaid. I uh, am here in Philly. And uh, this is an oil on canvas uh, painted um, iris for my garden. Um, painted from life. The other one as well are also irises from my garden painted from life. Um, and I think, you know, I paint flowers for a lot of reasons, but a big one is to kind of reclaim the genre of floral painting from this sort of lesser or not serious category that art history has often put it in. Mm -hmm. And especially since throughout history, women have often been excluded or limited in their ability to study and practice art. And so it's really important to me that I'm able to paint in areas that have both been historically reserved for men, but ultimately also, I think, to cast off these really gendered distinctions and to be able to feel empowered embracing more historically feminine subjects. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that I, can take the artistic skills and techniques that um, were developed at a time in history when I would have been restricted from learning them 
and sort of reappropriate those skills into what is historically a feminine space, my home or my garden, um, in order to paint something that I find really inspiring. Um, so, oh. Amazing, thank you so much, mm -hmm. yes. And in particular, this one, um, if you look at the detail shop, the, the petals look so velvety. Um, you can really almost feel like you're touching them. And I love the juxtaposition of the unfinished work kind of reminds you that it's a painting and it, it looks very three-dimensional with the other ones so finished. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, and then is there anything further you wanna say about this one? Um, just, you know, there is something really beautiful about being able to go out and to your yard, especially at springtime, which is when all the irises come up and just take a flower and put it in a vase and start painting. It feels very like of the moment, which is a really nice way to work. Amazing. Thank you so much, Catherine. Mm -hmm. and I Thank know you. You're in Philly. I'm also in Philly, so. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah. So cool. Philly girls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, next, thank you so much. Next, we have Kelly, Kelly Morgan. Hi, I'm here. Hey, Kelly. Tell us about your, um, your work. Uh, so it's, I've noticed it's been sort of a theme in some of the artists. I too studied in Italy um, when I was studying abroad and I absolutely fell in love with jewelry making while I was there. Um, and I ended up staying and training with a master goldsmith for over a year, which is how I learned a lot of my techniques. Um, so every piece I create is completely hands-on with uh, a tiny little jeweler's saw and a little acetylene flame. And this particular piece uh, was inspired by the Pre-Raphaelites. Um, I really love their aesthetic and their use of the feminine. Uh, she's Aphrodite, who is, of course, the Grecian goddess of love and beauty. And um, actually, all of my pieces do have different goddesses behind them, since I just think it's really important um, to have jewelry that has meaning, much like anything you would select, like in a painting, you would also select with what you wear. And so I think of them as sort of little personal talismans uh, for every day that you put on and uh, hopefully take on some aspects of the goddess or the myth that each piece talks about. Amazing, so cool. I love this one. And tell us about this one. Um, I'm actually wearing her. I don't know if anyone can see my little video, um, but I do have her on. This one is Kana Kludmore, and she was the Celtic goddess of music. And so she is strumming a golden harp. And um, all of my pieces are made from 18 karat gold and sterling silver. And the white material that you're seeing for the face and body, it's actually um, hand-carved recycled piano key. So it's scrimshaw that um, I do with a little diamond tipped pen. So they each have a slightly different uh, little face on each one. Incredible, thank you so much. And you can see there's tons of detail shots on these on the website. So you can, you can definitely see these on ericcontemporary.com. <laughs> so thank you so much, Kelly. I appreciate yeah. it. Um, okay, so next we have Kevin Chadwick. Kevin is not able to be with us today, but um, I loved the patterning in this one. So um, he did send in a little blurb to read. So, so for 30 years, I enjoyed a career as an illustrator in Washington, DC. I had a national client list and specialized in theater graphics. Like with most illustrators, when 9-11 and the advancement of computer graphics happened, the work dried up overnight. For a number of years after, I looked for a real job, and in 2015, after moving south to Lynchburg, Virginia, I was contacted by the Lynchburg Academy Center of the Arts, where they had an artist drop out of their monthly one-man shows. That one event sparked my interest again in painting. The process that I work in came to me as I was pursuing abstracts and portraiture simultaneously. Sitting one day in front of two canvases, I wondered what it would look like if I combined the two techniques. It's now a process of using painter's tape and putty knives to create the underlying blocks of latex color. The final patterns are then hand rendered and all skin tones are painted last using oils, leaving a ghost image of the abstract shapes underneath. 
I try and capture the spirit and emotions of my subjects without overworking the oils, which I feel adds energy to each work. And this is called The Good Sun. It's 24 by 24 inches, frame included. All right, so that is it for um, in this gallery. We have one last gallery. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And um, then we will, I will bring you to the other one. Um, everyone is so nice in the comments. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, please do um, put them in the, um, put them in the chat box and we will do questions at the end. All right. Last virtual gallery. There we go. I'm going to share the screen. Part three. Okay, so in this next show, we're going to start off with Lauren Woods. So Lauren, you can get ready. Hello. <laughs> hey Lauren, how are you? I'm good. Hello. Okay, I loved this piece. Um, so I'm gonna start out with this one. It's called Prince Charming. So tell us about this. Um, hi everybody, I'm Lauren Woods and I'm an artist and professor based in Auburn, Alabama. You can't tell my accent. <laughs> Uh, uh, my work explores themes of myth, gender, and sentimentality. This particular piece is based on the genre of Ophelia paintings and the fascination of artists with depicting the beautiful, dying, helpless female. So by substituting the character of Ophelia with Prince Charming, I'm playing with the narrative and questioning expectations of the masculine and feminine. Love it. Amazing. Incredible. Um, and this one is oil on panel. So thank you, Lauren. All right. So next we have Lucas. Lucas, are you here? He said he may not be able to attend. So um, Shannon is a painting by Lucas Bononi, who is an award-winning painter based in New York, New York. And um, she was a model for him. And I know that he created this um, thinking, of, um, thinking of the paintings that he was seeing in the museums and wanted to juxtapose um, something with a more abstracted background with a very hyper-realistic French academic realist portraiture in the front. So um, it creates this really interesting dynamic for ground and background, but also, um, you know, kind of more uh, modern day aesthetic with something um, of the past. So and this really does deserve a higher resolution image. So I would encourage you all to look at the high res image of this, because the details in the face are quite astounding. So this is Shannon by Lucas Fanoni. All right, so next we have Mahua Mazundar. I probably butchered that, but Mahua, are you here? Okay, well, um, Mahua's painting is called Venetian Red. It is oil on linen, 18 by 24 inches. Um, and yeah, the frame is included. So this is a beautiful portrait of a young woman. Um, and yeah, so this is actually, can, can you hear me? I am here though. Oh, oh okay, great. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us about the piece. I don't know if you can see me yet. Yeah. So as you already said, this is, I'm actually an artist from um, Alexandria, Virginia, which is very close to Washington, DC uh, for anyone interested in knowing where I'm from. 
and this is an oil on linen which is uh, the linen is uh, pasted on board so and it is framed and uh, the inspiration for this painting actually comes from our visits to Venice, like a lot of people in the show. Looks like we all go to uh, Europe a lot and to Italy, uh, which I have sorely missed visiting this summer because I usually go in summer. And um, this is actually more, um, some people will recognize the putties there. And this is more of an exploration of bringing some modern sensibilities to uh, the traditional uh, Renaissance classical kind of things and uh, I also wanted to use uh, the Venetian red pigment because it is uh, very classically used in uh, Venice and the Italian Renaissance paintings. I know this show is not about the Renaissance paintings but the um, paint itself was used in those times so I really wanted to use Venetian red and named it that way. And that's mostly about it. Thank All you. Right. Yes, thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy you were here. Yeah, if any of you are not, if, if I start talking and you are here, you know, feel free to just, you know, interrupt me if I don't see you. Um, amazing, beautiful work. And yes, Italy is so inspiring. Okay, so next we have um, Manuel Nunez. Manuel has three pieces in the show. I'll show you the pieces first and then read you his inspiration. Um, so this is called Spring, it's graphite on paper, 26 by 13, and it's on 100% cotton paper. Um, so yeah, this is, a, this is a, a drawing, just an original drawing by Manuel Nunez. And this piece, which is about as pre-oraculate as you can get, um, called Arise My Love, um, limited edition glache with hand gold gilding. So um, this piece um, is an artist proof 10. I believe he told me it's the last one left and it's 30 by 30 inches by 16 inches. And yeah, this is, this is another piece by him. Very pre like this aesthetic right here. And so his third piece, this one is called In a Golden Light. And this is also limited edition cliche with hand gold gilding. And um, so, yeah, this is, this is another piece by him. Let me read out what he says. Okay, Manuel says, I am inspired by a desire to reflect the love, beauty, and redemption of the cross. One of the most amazing revelations that I have had in reading the Bible is discovering that it is an incredible love story full of passion, danger, and intrigue between the husband and the bride and his rescuing her from the dragon. My work varies from drawings to paintings to mixed media, oils, acrylics, gold leaf, graphite, and charcoal. Often, especially in my pre raphaelite influenced work, it is necessary for me to create my own costumes, armor, etc., using metal, leather, gauze, and flowers. I frequently do my own photo shoots using models. My thanks to Jessica for her hard work in coordinating this show. It is an honor to be included. Thank you, Manuel. It's an honor to have you. Um, so that is Manuel Nunez. Next, we have Maria Jimenez. Maria, are you here? Uh, yes, I am. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you for inviting me, Jessica. Appreciate being here and hello to everyone. So I'm a New York-based artist. Um, the uh, title of this painting is Rebirth. Uh, it was inspired by a high school student playing the role of Mina Harker. Uh, from the fictional Gothic novel drama, um, Dracula, uh, by Bram Stoker. Um, I saw her perform the role in, a, in school rehearsals for a period of nine weeks. Um, and she evolved from this really shy performing artist to a really bold actress. And I wanted to show her expression. I wanted to uh, dramatize the light, um, her, her pose. Um, and I kind of wanted uh, the audience to um, uh, or inspire the viewers that if you have a passion um, for the arts to um, you know continue doing it whether it's music or writing um, because the more you practice the more you you get better at it the way she became more confident um, mm -hmm. doing the the drama uh, and performing in the play 
And then she eventually became, you know, a better writer, a better student. So the arts really kind of blossomed for her and they could blossom for all of us. It just helps us grow. Uh, so just keep doing it and keep being inspired by it no matter what it is. So, um, yeah. <laughs> And this is a, a large piece too. It's 28 by 34 inches. Yeah, yeah, oil on canvas, correct. Um, and yeah, I was, the, I was initially inspired actually by Rubens. I love the, the, the way he paints clothing, especially from, um, you know, 17th uh, century or so. Um, so, uh, and 16th century. So I was just kind of inspired by the cloth. Used. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. You have the D for Dracula back there. Yeah, the D is for Dracula, correct. That was part of the, mm -hmm. the uh, costumes and performances in the sets. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, so next we have Matthew Noziera. Matthew is, was not able to be with us today, but he did send us a video. So I'm going to pull up the video and we will enjoy his being here, even though he's not here. So, okay, let's stop sharing for a second. Here we go. Hi everyone, and I uh, hope you are doing fine and that the opening is going well. Sorry for not being able to speak live in France and it's night. Nice. <laughs> so this painting is an oil on panel and it's talking about the notion of uh, heritage. So the character in this painting is holding a horse cast, which can be seen as a symbol of the antique of a past culture. And he could rather keep it with him or drop it into the water. And this image came to my mind when I was reflecting about why in France we lost or a traditional approach towards art. Figurative painting is not really popular anymore here and fine arts even less. So I was thinking, why do we have this rupture between our past and our contemporary art? That's the idea between this painting. What are you doing with what happened before you? Do you keep it with you or do you throw it away? So that's it. I hope you guys enjoy the work and have a great opening. Thank you again for having me, Jessica, and congratulations to all the amazing artists there. Bye-bye. Amazing. Yay. It's, uh, it's great to have you, Matthew. Okay, so let's, um, we're going to switch the screen again. Technology is really behaving for us. I'm like so excited. <laughs> okay, so next we have a piece, another video piece that I'll play for you in a second, but this is by Morgan Dummett. This is called Furies, uh, Silver and Bronze GFRC Relief with Hardwood Frame. So this is, you know, handmade relief piece. So um, not a painting, but, you know, it's all, it's all precious metals and um, different materials. Um, so this is by Morgan Dummett, and I'm going to um, show you a um, I'm going to share the screen of his, um, what he wanted to share with us. All right. This is Morgan. Hi there. My name is Morgan, and this is my sculpture, Furies. I want to talk about the Pre-Raphaelites and their effect on my work, especially as regards their use of symbolism and mythology. For some artists, symbolism is a relatively straightforward way of inserting meaning into the work. So if I see a skull, it might mean death. If I see a dog, it might mean fidelity, and so on. For me, symbolism is a little bit more personal and experiential. I'm less interested in giving the viewer a key through which to understand the meaning of the work, as I am in laying a groundwork and sprinkling out ingredients for a variety of emotional experience. I'd like viewers to feel as though they stumbled upon a secret, unknowable right. Who exactly these figures are, where they've been, and what they're doing is as opaque as it probably is irrelevant. What's most important to me is that the figures feel as though they're invested with a palpable but open-ended sense of spiritual gravity, and I hope you find that in the work. Thank you. 
All right, thank you so much, Morgan. Okay, uh, so we're gonna go back to the gallery now. All right, so that is Morgan's work. And next we have um, Nancy B. Miller. So Nancy, are you here? I know she said she might not be able to make it. Um, so I do have something to read for her. Um, so this is what Nancy says about this piece in particular. Okay, this is called Cosplay Amanda. This fanciful portrait was started from life as a demo during a class I was teaching entitled Painting the Costumed Portrait. I later completed the work in my studio. As befits a class demo, it is small, only 10 by 8 inches, and is painted with oils on linen. It depicts a friend of mine, Amanda, who loves to dress up. She has a wide array of costumes, and for this pose, she was wearing a gorgeous filmy pink Glinda the Good Witch gown with a silver and rhinestone glittering crown. It was a joy to have her pose for my class, and we all had fun painting her. It did make me think that whatever costume my friend chooses to wear, her essence shines through. And whether she wears a crown and carries a scepter or is wearing an elf hat and carrying a longbow, these costumes don't define her completely, but she, she subtly defines the costumes. I think this kind of collaboration is true for all of us, no matter what personas we adopt. This painting was exhibited at the 2020 Selma Gundy Club Small Works National Exhibition in New York City earlier in the year, and I was honored when it was chosen to be featured on the poster and display material for the exhibition. Go Nancy, I love this painting. Um, all right, so Nancy has two other works and I thought that this was a very timely piece. And um, so this is called Behind the Mask. This self-portrait painting is 17 by 11 inches in size and was made using pencil, watercolor and gouache on heavy arches watercolor paper. It's a direct heartfelt response to the current COVID-19 pandemic. I was reading about how isolated and sad many people feel in this current situation. Even when out and about, having to wear a mask and seeing other faces covered by masks seems isolating to many. While I totally understand these feelings, I also feel that when I see someone wearing a mask, I see someone who is showing respect, kindness, and caring to themselves and to the community. Several people I know personally have been stricken with COVID-19. In fact, one of my young students was just success successfully taken off a ventilator. So for me, seeing a mask means seeing love and caring. I just want to remind myself and others of the friendly faces behind the mask that we see. So that is a beautiful piece by Nancy, Behind the Mask. Okay, so next one called In the Garden by Nancy. So this watercolor painting is 17 by 11 inches in size and was made using pencil and transparent watercolor on Arches hot press paper. It was painted during a live Zoom session with the model posing in her back garden in England while I worked in my Philadelphia studio. Zoom is amazing. The pose was inspired by the painting titled Portrait of Fanny Gale, painted in oils by Henrik Maria von Hess between 1820 and 1821. Interestingly, von Hess was a German painter who was a member of the Nazarene movement, an artistic movement which directly influenced and inspired the later Pre-Raphaelite movement. The Nazarenes rejected what they saw as an ego-driven and superficially, superficial virtuosity in art and strove instead to create art which embodied honesty, simplicity, and spiritual values. I find their work touching and heartfelt. Painting this lovely young model posing in the sunshine in her garden was a beautiful moment in time I will never forget. Thank you, Nancy. Amazing. All right, so next we have Nancy Jo Ward. Nancy, are you here? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you, Jessica. I'm thrilled to be part of this exhibition. I'm a, uh, uh, I live and work as a professor of art and design on the central coast of California. Uh, my connection to the Pre-Raphaelites is 
that they had a reputation for being rebellious and they challenged the Victorian traditions of beauty as well as sexual and religious prudence. This fits uh, both my personality and my art practice. Uh, my process it challenges what we refer to as painting. I create hybrid art and research mixing both traditional and digital media. My work focuses on women as they appear assertive, powerful, and face contemporary issues. I'm compelled to make connections emotionally. In this is called Transgressions of a Mad Woman. Her expression is intentionally interpretive. The title references debates around whether mental illness is a social construct designed to control unruly subjects or an embodied response to social and personal trauma. Interesting, very cool. Okay, so we have another one. Can tell us about this. This one is um, was done earlier, and, and it's a little a little more traditional in its composition, although the process is very similar. Uh, so this is called Firefly Dreams, and it's an attempt to recreate memories of warm evenings at twilight that were illuminated by unpredictable timings of light emanating from fireflies at that time of day when the forms become more mysterious. She's held in a peaceful, enchanted moment in time. Both of these works are started digitally and are printed with archival inks on to Hannah Mula, William Turner, which is 100% cotton mold made paper. They're hand finished with chalk pastels and metallic foils. Although my work is digital, in my art practice, I don't make runs of multiple prints. I make versions on different substrates like papers, aluminum, silk, and even crystalline coated polymer that is displayed in LED light boxes. Wow, very cool. Thank you. And uh, there is, the frames are included in both of these as well. Right. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Very interesting. Thank you. Cool. All right, so next we have Phyllis. Phyllis, are you here? I am. Hello. Hi, everybody. I think I have the brightest painting of the entire bunch. <laughs> um, this is um, Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve was part of a series of work that I did that focused on symbols of things that connect us all together. Um, Adam and Eve serves as a metaphor for the beginning of all mankind, regardless of your belief system. So whether you actually believe in the true Adam and Eve or whether uh, you believe in the scientific explanation of primordial stoop um, to Darwinism, they still are a cultural symbol of where we all came from. And I think that's a question that stays with our consciousness throughout our lives. So for me, it was like, a, they're a really important symbol. Um, I try to infuse beauty with you know, color and bold geometric shapes. Um, there's, this has gold leaf, um, actually serves to hide a few private parts, but um, also, um, you know, I think it adds the brightness to the composition that I was looking to have. Um, I also infuse a little humor in there because, you know, let's face it, you know, Eve was a sassy character, so I might as well um, show some of that. Um, anyway, that's the inspiration that went behind this piece. Thank you so much, Phyllis. I appreciate it. And um, I've showed this piece to a few people and everyone who sees it laughs in a good way. They mm -hmm. say it's amazing, but then they laugh. And it's supposed to be beautiful. It's supposed to be uplifting, even though it, behind it, there really is like a serious symbol that I think we all relate to, whether it's, you know, in a good way or questioning way. I, I think it's, you know, something that we can all feel something about. Thank you so much, Phil. All right, so uh, next we have Ryan Myers. Ryan, are you here? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm here. All right, great. Hi. Uh, thank you, Jessica, for having me. My name is Ryan Myers. Uh, I'm an artist in the Hudson Valley. This is my piece, um, Siren Song. It's from uh, my current body of work, which deals with contemporizing um, 
uh, classical stories, both thematically and stylistically. And so we here we have the story of the sirens um, from Homer's Odyssey. And uh, in the place of uh, the sailors, I, I place my son on a uh, on a pool raft, and uh, and basically that that's it. Amazing, amazing. And um, tell us about your uh, media, your medium that so, you. Yeah, absolutely. So this one um, is uh, wax pastel and acrylic on on canvas, and uh, what that is, wax pastel is. Is like any other pastel. It's uh, it's it's drawn on um, and it's water based. So that uh, once it's on the canvas or on paper or whatever you're using, it, it could be uh, manipulated with brush further so that it becomes more of like a uh, a straightforward paint medium. Hmm. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and so next we have Sandra. Sandra, are you here? Hmm. Okay, so um, Sandra told me a little bit about this piece. Um, so this piece by Sandra Sanchez, who is an instructor at the Grand Central Atelier. Um, she said she, she has this um, bunny for a while and she always loved it and she just wanted to paint it one day. And she said um, she didn't care what other people thought that um, it might not be like the most grand or like dignified looking object but um it made her so happy that she wanted to um create it so it reminded me of the queer Raphaelites because they painted a lot of everyday scenes and everyday objects as well um they kind of elevated the everyday to this like grand thing that was like worthy of being talked about and seen and elevated so this piece definitely reminded me of that so this is um porcelain bunny by sandra sanchez sandra <coughs> sorry Okay, so um, next we have Sarah Warda. Sarah, are you here? I am. I'm here. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me, Jessica. Um, I live in Connecticut. And in this painting, it's of a favorite subject of mine. It's my son, who's nine years old. And he's standing along a path uh, near our home, a an old farm. And in this painting, I wanted to capture um, his innocence and um, hope and a spiritual connection that children are, feel very close to that we sometimes forget. And I wanted to show through his eyes, hope and um, purity of like positive future. So um, with everything that's going on in the world today, I just wanted to put out a painting almost like a prayer to be positive and Maybe. to love. So that's what it's about. I think you definitely accomplished that. And the sky looks so, um, it really looks like a real sky, like just at that dusk point. So I think that that, um, I think you accomplished all that. So amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, so um, and then we have Ursula. Ursula um, did this painting and she's not able to be here, but she wanted me to read this. Although many of the best known pre-Raphaelite works were centered around established mythology, I have always been more drawn to the works that leave the interpretation of the story to the viewer. This sense of dramatic ambiguity balanced with floral embellishment inspired Botilde's voyage. And that is um, another painting of a child, actually. Um, I think that relates. Um, it's very, very charming. I love this piece. And the pre raphaelites often painted these bowers, um, these bowers of roses, if you look at a lot of their paintings. And I, I thought that this had it as well. All right. And then we have Claire Celeste Borsch. Claire, are you here? So this piece actually is sold, but um, this is a piece by Claire. Um, Claire is a collage artist um, with fantastic work. And um, this piece is all about nature and our interactions with it. So thank you so much, Claire. And then 
who else do we have here? Okay, so we have um, another one by Eric Kopel. This piece is um, also sold. It's called Nancy's Brook. And um, this piece actually has a bit of a um, tragic history. Um, there, there was this woman named Nancy, apparently, who um, defied the wishes of her family and decided to elope with this young man. And um, she was fleeing through the night and she got lost in the woods and she actually froze to death. And so um, it's kind of like this urban legend of where Eric lives and they named a mountain after her. They named a, um, all these different parts of the landscape are named after her. So this is Nancy's Brook and this is his dramatization of it. There's actually little people in there who are about to find her. So, um, but this is this piece sold. So thank you, Eric. All right, and this piece is by Lauren Sanserik. Beautiful piece in person. We call it Afternoon in the Shawnagunks. Shawangunks. And Lauren's not able to be here, but this is what um, she wrote. I painted this piece outdoors near the historic Mo Honk Mountain House in upstate New York. The location is within yards of where the Hudson River School painter Sansford Gifford painted. And so in honor of Gifford, I wanted to use some of his classic compositional and emotive ideas. I also wanted to capture the carefree and contemplative feeling of being on a mountaintop. And thank you, Lauren, that's a beautiful explanation. And this last one is by me. And um, so this piece, Lady in the Water, like other pre -Raphaelites. But this piece is called Transformation and it's a large oil painting that I did. It was inspired by the fairy tale of Swan Lake where the princess turns into a swan who lives by a lake, hence the name of the story. Um, so I painted the moment where she is transforming, her arms raised as they are about to become wings, but also as a nod to the beautiful ballet pose as Swan Lake is also a famous ballet. So that concludes all of the pieces in all three exhibitions. I'm just over the moon that um, all the different parts of technology really came through for us today. So um, I just want to thank you guys all so much for coming. Um, and yeah, um, I just want to remind you guys there is a pre-sale today until midnight tonight. So 10% off all the pieces in this show using the code um, presale on the website. Um, so I'm just going to um, type that in the chat here once more so you guys can visit there. There you go. Um, so yeah, now um, are there any questions that you have for the artist or from anyone at all? Wow, I love all your, just looking at the comments now because I haven't looked at them this entire exhibition, but um, thank you guys for all being so engaged in this. This is wonderful. I love Adina's comment. This exhibition was so inspirational and thoughtful. I gained a new perspective and more insight from hearing everyone speak. Thanks, for, thanks to everyone for sharing and congrats. All right, so if there's no questions, um, I, uh, I just want to thank you for your time and attention in this exhibit, and I will end with a poem by Dante Gabriel Rossetti, who is the central artist who began the Pre-Raphaelites in the 1800s. So he was also a very gifted poet. So these are three stanzas taken from his poem entitled The Portrait, which I thought was very fitting. Okay. In painting her, I shrined her face mid mystic trees where light falls in hardly at all, a covert place where you might think to find a din of doubtful talk and a live flame wandering and many a shape whose name not itself knoweth and old do and your own footsteps meeting you 
and all things going in as they came. A deep dim wood, and there she stands, as in that wood, that day, or so, was the still movement of her hands, and such the pure line's gracious flow. And passing fair, the type must seem, unknown the presence and the dream. Tis she, though of herself, alas, less than her shadow on the grass, or than her image in the stream. That day we met there, I and she, one with the other all alone, and we were blithe, yet memory saddens those hours, and when the moon looks upon daylight, and with her I stooped to drink the spring water, a thirst where other waters sprang, and where the echo is she sang, my soul another echo there. Okay, so thanks so much again, everyone. Hope you really enjoyed this. Have a wonderful night. Bye, everyone. Thank you Bye. so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.